If the cockpit interior is too dark, activate the flashlight with left alt plus L. If the yellow cross cursor is not visible, press left alt plus C to make it appear. Also, you can press spacebar to cut short long texts in case you are repeating the mission. This training mission follows the procedures described on the flight manual of the real aircraft, adapted for use on the Pucara aircraft of DCS. The steps of the interior inspection are already preset on DCS, and thus have been omitted from the mission. The cold start procedure used on this mission, includes the following sections. Before starting the engines. Starting the right engine. Starting the left engine. Before taxi. Communications with air traffic control, a DC, have been omitted as the aircraft does not yet has a radio able to communicate with the DCS, artificial intelligence units. The IF-58 Pucara, fortress in Quechua language, is a counterinsurgency twin turboprop attack aircraft, manufactured in Argentina by the Fabrica Militar de Aviones, FMA, from 1974 up to 1993. It is a two-seat, dual-control, aircraft of conventional construction, and able to operate from unprepared airfields. It is similar in capabilities to the American OV-10, tough the Pucara is slightly faster. The Pucara is armed with two 20mm cannons, and four 7.6mm machine guns, mounted on the fuselage, plus three hardpoints for up to 3,570 pounds of bombs, rocket pods or external fuel tanks. Its engines are two Turbomeca Astasia 16G turboprops of 978 horsepower each, which give a maximum speed of 270 knots at 10,000 feet. The cruise speed is 230 knots, with a 190 nautical miles of tactical radius with 3,300 pounds of weapons. Service ceiling is 33,000 feet and its G limits are plus 6 to minus 3G. The Pucara has seen service with the Air Forces of Argentina, Colombia, Sri Lanka, and Uruguay, with a total production of 110 units. It is still in limited service with Argentina, and there are plans to modernize the surviving examples, but funding has yet to be obtained. Check the following items. The step numbers corresponds to those on the flight manual of the real aircraft, and we have skipped those steps that are not simulated with them. 1. Parking brake. Confirm it is enabled on its down position. A left click moves the lever upwards, while a right click moves it down. Two, fuel tank valves, set to open. The Pucara has two fuel tanks on the fuselage, with a total capacity of 206 gallons, plus two tanks on the wings of 66 gallons each. These levers control one fuel valve for each engine, with three positions, closed, cross-feed, and open. The cross-feed position allows the fuel tanks to be shared between both engines. On the open position, the left and right fuel tanks are isolated from one another. For a normal start, move both levers to their forward-most position, open. 6. Fuel pumps. Check both left and right pumps are on the off position. 7. Engine start switches. Check both left and right switches are on their neutral, middle, position. This item is not well modeled yet, as on the real aircraft they should be set at stop, but currently that position is momentary and doesn't hold. 13. Battery. Set the switch to the Vuelo, flight, position, the Bateria Annunciator will illuminate. The Tierra, ground, position is used to connect a ground power unit, but this has not been simulated yet. The voltmeter should measure 25 to 26 volts, but it is not yet simulated. 14. Check that the following enunciators have illuminated. Minimum propeller flight pitch. Canopy unlocked. Takeoff forbidden. Fuel pumps off. Oxygen level low. Oil pressure low. Generators off. Fuel pressure low. 16. Landing gear. Check the locked enunciator is on. The official checklist does not mention the interior lights, but as we now have battery power, we will turn on the interior lighting to have a better view of the instruments. First, turn the cockpit lights master switch to on. Next, adjust the backlighting intensity of the instruments by turning this knob.
19. Fuel. Confirm the amount of fuel on left and right tanks. 21. Trim. Check that all trims are at their neutral position. The official procedure states that the right engine should be started first. 1. Right fuel pump. Set to on. This activates the right fuel pump that is submerged on the right wing tank. Not a part of the official procedure at this point, but to alert the ground crew and ATC that we intend to start engines, we will now activate the anti-collision light by turning the highlighted switch down, onto the desk position, with a right click. Unfortunately, the Pucara engine controls are not yet faithful to the real aircraft, for one the propeller pitch lever can't be split to control separately the left and right propellers. Second, the real aircraft turboprops operate at a constant 100% RPM, which the pilot regulates with the two levers marked RPM, on both sides of the pitch lever. Currently, on DCS these RPM levers are not yet implemented. As the real engines operate at a fixed RPM, the pilot adjusts the power by controlling the propeller's pitch, on the same way a helicopter does with their main rotor. On the current version of the simulated Pucara, the propeller pitch lever operates like the engine throttle of a conventional jet aircraft, so on this lesson we will use it that way. 2. Propeller pitch lever. Advance into the startup position, with two right clicks on the lever. 3. Right start switch. Advance to its Encendido position, with a right click, and hold it until the right RPM reaches 5%. 5%. You may now release the start switch, as the RPM have surpassed 5%. 4. Monitor the turbine start, using its RPM and EGT gauges. At 25% RPM. The right oil pressure alarm should go off. The exhaust gas temperature should not surpass 650 degrees Celsius. At 50% RPM, the right generator will go online and its alarm should go off. The engine RPM should stabilize at around 65%. We will now proceed to start the left engine. 1. Left fuel pump. Set to on. This activates the left fuel pump that is submerged on the left wing tank. 2. Propeller pitch lever. It is already at the startup position, since the lever isn't yet simulated in non-split way. 3. Left start switch. Advance to its Encendido position, with a right click, and hold it until the left RPM reaches 5%. You may now release the start switch, as the RPM have surpassed 5%. 4. Monitor the turbine start, using its RPM and EGT gauges. At 25% RPM, the left oil pressure alarm should go off. The exhaust gas temperature should not surpass 650 degrees Celsius. At 50% RPM, the left generator will go online and its alarm should go off. The engine RPM should stabilize at around 65%. Now that we have both engines running, let's proceed with the final section of the cold start procedure. 4. Hydraulic system. Check load. The Pucar hydraulic system has two accumulators, the main one and another for the parking brake, that can be used also for emergency braking if the main fails. Check the gauges for both, the small one shows the pressure of the parking brake accumulator, the larger one shows the main accumulator. 5. Canopy. Close it, by left clicking the highlighted switch. Confirm that the canopy warning light goes off. It's behind the gun sight. 6. Flaps. 
Check that they are set to their takeoff position. Nine. RMI indicator. Adjust its heading needle by turning the highlighted knob with the mouse wheel. Ten. Check all the temperature gauges. Engines exhaust. Engines oil temperature. Fuel temp. Eleven. Oxygen. Activate the oxygen system with the highlighted switch, and check both its amount and pressure gauges. 12. Radio and navigation. Connected. We will learn the communications and navigation systems on future training missions, for now let's just enable each device. 12a. Enable the VHF radio, with the highlighted switch. 12b. Enable the TACAN unit, with the highlighted switch. 12C. Enable the UHF radio, with the HF switch. 12D. Enable the VOR, ILS unit, with the highlighted switch. 19. Parking brake. Release it, by moving the handle to its up position, with two left clicks. 21. Check the briefing and adjust QNH on the altimeter. 22. Not a part of the official procedure, but at this point we will activate the external lights. 22A. Activate the navigation lights. 22B. Next, activate the formation lights. 22C. Finally, activate the taxi lights. Congratulations, this concludes the before taxi section of the cold start procedure, the aircraft is now ready to taxi. You have successfully finished this training mission. On the next training mission we will learn the taxi and takeoff procedures. Press spacebar to end this mission.